A lot of high-end flagship smartphones these days have copper gizmos inside called vapor chambers. These facilitate the heat removal from the processor, just like a CPU cooler in a gaming computer. And for the most part, a bigger vapor chamber is better. Today, OnePlus has sent us a flowy emerald OnePlus 12. with the goal of revealing, what they say, is an extremely large dual cryo-velocity cooling system, and that I can extract this cooling system by whatever means necessary, which I'm very happy to do. Huge thanks to OnePlus for sponsoring this teardown and giving us the world's first look inside the OnePlus 12. I have another brand new phone we'll check the durability of after we're done with this one. The camera lens on the back is just as large and in charge as last year. The glass lens feels thick and solid, similar to a large watch face. But we aren't here for the exterior, we're here for the interior. Using a heat gun and my handy dandy jerry rig razor knife, I can slice through the softened adhesive and pull the marbled teal back glass panel away from the OnePlus 12. This gives us our very first look at the 50 watt wireless charger which is held down by 12 screws, each of which have a dab of red thread locker, shout out if you remember the OG red battery days. And yes, this is indeed a 50 watt wireless charger. The OnePlus 12 can charge faster wirelessly than most phones can charge while plugged in, going from 0 to 50% charged in just 23 minutes, a day's worth of power in just a half hour. The OnePlus 12 has the fastest wireless charging of any phone in North America and is three times faster at wireless charging than the latest iPhone. It looks very similar to other wireless chargers with the same thin winding copper coils, but with the help of the dual cryo-velocity cooling system, it can pack a punch. I enjoy saying that a lot, actually. Cryo-velocity. With the battery ribbon unplugged like a little Lego, I can move my way down to the bottom plastics. These have eight more Phillips head screws. With the screws gone, the lower stereo spatial audio speaker can be removed. There are a few balls inside. Between this and the upper speaker, it can throw out some pretty trippy 3D audio effects. And speaking of trippy, the battery comes out next, each side with its own pull tab. Thumbs up for that. You'll notice as it comes up that we get our first peek at the dual cryo-velocity cooling system, which not only cools the processor, but also the battery during charging. Because on top of that 50 watt wireless charging, the OnePlus 12 has corded fast charging at 80 watts, which is 0 to 50% in just a mind-blowing 12 minutes. It can accomplish these speeds because the batteries are split in half like the Cybertruck, each half charging up at the same time and there's a total of 5,400 milliamp hours. Any excess heat generated by charging transfers out through the screen via that dual cryo-velocity cooling system. With the SIM card tray removed, I'll unclip the daughter board extension ribbon and the screen ribbon from its extension, along with the underscreen fingerprint scanner. Then the charging port board can come away from the phone, and it looks like the little circuits are coated, which I assume helps with the waterproofing. We also have some blue gaskets for the ribbon cables, and a red rubber ring around the 80 watt USB-C 3.2 port. We have some more pretty blue gaskets up on top of the main motherboard, along with two more silver Phillips head screws. With the screws removed, we see that the OnePlus has color coordinated their thermal paste to the gaskets, which is most definitely aesthetically pleasing. The large rectangular camera unit still attached to the motherboard is the 64 megapixel 3x telephoto zoom with OIS. Apparently, this can also zoom up to 120 times, but I did forget to check that out before ripping the phone apart. The blue thermal paste looks delicious, but we're not going to taste it. The center camera is our 48 megapixel ultra wide, and the larger camera off to the left is a 50 megapixel fourth generation Hasselblad camera. The same brand of camera they used when we first landed on the moon 55 years ago. They did leave those cameras behind, so next time you look at the moon, remember they're still up there. This one here on Earth, though, does have optical image stabilization. The front camera is 32 megapixels and does not have OIS. Now, this is where decisions need to be made. The dual cryo-velocity vapor chamber is strategically placed on the frame, where it can grab heat from the battery and Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, and move that heat out through the thin 6.8-inch 2K resolution 120Hz AMOLED screen. This means that in order for us to see the rest of this cooling system, we have to remove the screen, which usually kills the screen. I'll do my best, but I don't have high hopes for it surviving. But look at that. We finally see the rest of the copper dual cryo-velocity vapor chamber. 
Hidden under some graphite, it is a gigantic unit. And not only is it massive, but it's actually two vapor chambers stacked on top of each other. A smaller 3,686 mm squared unit and a larger 5,454 mm squared vapor chamber sitting on top. A vapor chamber for a vapor chamber with a combined area of over 9,000. The largest cooling system ever in a OnePlus phone and I think the largest cooling system we've ever seen on my channel outside of a laptop. Which means this OnePlus 12 is the coolest phone, quite literally, that we've ever seen. The copper rectangle is a vacuum sealed chamber with a very small amount of liquid inside and as the phone heats up that liquid turns to gas, cools and then condenses and travels back to the heat source via some sweet capillary action along the thin wire mesh. And in this OnePlus 12 that process happens twice since the smaller vapor chamber has its own larger vapor chamber sitting on top, speeding up the heat dissipation efficiency like a sandwich of cooling. Even though OnePlus said I could extract the dual cryo-velocity vapor chamber however I wanted, I did try to keep the phone in one piece, so fingers crossed. With the Hasselblad camera array put back into place and the motherboard clipped in, I can put the dual cell battery back where it came from. And moment of truth, the phone itself vibrates and turns on, but it looks like someone damaged the screen. And by someone I mean me. The shade of green almost matches the back panel though, F in chat for our fallen friend. Luckily OnePlus has a solid repair program, going all the way back to the OnePlus 7, so getting replacement parts isn't too difficult. With a new screen and a new dual cryo-velocity vapor chamber, it'll be as good as new. I'm a fan. Thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.